Warning, the following clip is from the terrible movie Batman and Robin. Viewer discretion is advised. And you are poison. Poison Ivy. I bid $50,000 for poison ivy. One million dollars. Two million. Five million. That's a utility belt, not a money belt. Six million. Seven million. <laughs> Never leave the cave without it. We didn't put that cha-ching sound effect in there. That is actually in the movie. This is quality filmmaking. Just mwah, chef's kiss. But can we just stop and think about this for a minute? How on earth can Batman get a credit card? Does the Bat Cave get junk mail telling him he's pre-approved for a card with a $7 million limit? Also, at that point, doesn't it just pretty much give up the ghost when it comes to a secret identity? Uh, yes, we'll start sending these multi-million dollar bills to the cave under Wayne Manor. Hmm, nothing suspicious about that mailing address. Of course, I'm joking about all this, but also, I, I'm not really joking. You see, Batman tells us all the time what he is. I am vengeance. I am the night. I am Batman. You know what he conveniently leaves out of that list, though? I am the white-collar criminal defrauding millions of dollars from my investors. Oh, sure. Everything's all hunky-dory while he's punching underprivileged goons in the face, but when it comes to committing corporate crimes, Batman is just as two-faced as the rest. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that's secretly funded by a reclusive billionaire whose parents were killed in an alleyway by unresolved plot holes. I don't know what you've been thinking about recently, but lately my brain has been fixated about how masked heroes make a buck. It all began last year when Falcon and the Winter Soldier showed us that an Avenger might not be capable of making ends meet. How do you guys make a living? I mean, your financials are all over the place. There's a tremendous amount of goodwill and people are inclined to help. Which, what? Even if the military contracted private militia that is Stark's Avengers aren't getting some of that government dollar, then dude, let me introduce you to Patreon. Start a GoFundMe. Look, if this rando can ask for $10 to make a potato salad and wind up earning 50,000 in donos, I think you're gonna be fine there, Falcon. Spider-Man, you too. Now that you're going solo post No Way Home, skip the whole freelance photographer for a newspaper thing. You're gonna make way more, way easier by just turning the camera on yourself and becoming an Instagrammer. Own those exclusive rights to those photos, y'all. Anyway, in the world of superheroes getting paid, one person that never needed an explanation was Batman. It's always seemed pretty obvious, right? His parents were rich, and when they died, he inherited their billions, which he then uses to pay for his gadgets. Simple, right? Seems like it should be, but there's actually a lot more complication here than you might initially think. In anticipation of the new Batman movie that's coming out, I've been going back and re-watching the Dark Knight trilogy, and when you actually follow what's going on in these movies, Bruce Wayne shows himself to be more corrupt and more destructive than literally any of the criminals that he throws into jail. It's only now that I realize it because, you know, I'm an adult who has to think about adult things like taxes, and now I'm starting to see all the ways that he's screwing people like me over. Oh yeah, and in the process, he's also exposing a secret identity. Mmm, it's gonna be a fun one, friends. If you need any background on this, uh, it's Batman. If you haven't seen Bruce Wayne's parents get shot in the back alley by now, then let me be the first to welcome you back from your 82-year coma. You're a medical miracle. After the incredibly wealthy Waynes get killed, Bruce inherits a massive business empire, which, shockingly, is not squandered by the men running it during his adolescence. This means that when he reaches adulthood, Bruce Wayne is really, really rich. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. Well, his depicted net worth has constantly fluctuated over the years. It's usually trending upwards over time to make sure that Bruce remains one of the richest people on Earth. In 2020, the comics version of Joker stole all of Bruce's money, and Punchline, that's Joker, Joker's new Harley Quinn replacement, said that Wayne was worth over a hundred billion dollars. Surprisingly, that's only half of Jeff Bezos. Is there a joke to be had there? Uh, I don't know, I'll let you fill in the blanks. The problem I'm talking about, though, isn't the hundred billion dollars, it's that in the very same comic, Punchline points out that Bruce doesn't personally own that much. Instead, he keeps all that money in shell corporations to secretly move it around and mask his vigilante activities. This started to raise some red flags for me. You see, I'm interested in the films, and wouldn't you know it, but this exact same money scheme is explicitly talked about in Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. The company went public a week ago, and I bought most of the shares. Through various charitable foundations and trusts and so forth. It's all a bit technical, but the important thing is that my company's future is secure. Here's the thing, those lines make it sound like Bruce Wayne actually owns Wayne Enterprises, but when you look at the reality of the situation, that is far from the case. You see, as we just heard, Wayne Enterprises just went public. That means it isn't just owned by the Wayne family or their small pool of investment backers anymore. Instead, the company is now owned by thousands of shareholders, all of whom have chosen to invest their money into the company after perusing Robin Hood for like five minutes. They are all given legal rights as shareholders, rights that are gonna be causing some big 
big problems for old Batman here. First of all, shareholders have a right to information. Since anyone who owns stock in a company is considered to be a part owner of that company, it's their right to see what the company is doing with that money. In The Dark Knight, we learn that Wayne Enterprises' books aren't exactly squeaky clean. As his own accountant, Mr. Reese, puts it, Applied sciences. The whole division of Wayne Enterprises just disappeared overnight. I went down to the archives and I started pulling some old files. Don't tell me you didn't recognize your baby out there pancaking cop cars on the evening news. Oh sure, watching the movie, we're all like, be quiet, lame numbers, man. Stop being a buzzkill. But in reality, this guy, he's the true hero. He's defending, you know, the everyday people who invested their hard-earned money into the publicly traded company that's supposed to be operating above board. And he's defending it against Lucius and Bruce, the two guys who are cooking the books. Doing a pretty bad job of cooking those books too, I might add. This also means that any stockholder doing their due diligence on the company is going to be noticing the same kinds of things. Alarms would be raised by any half-decent investment broker when they realized that large assets were just disappearing off Wayne Enterprises' balance sheet. Every time something goes missing from those books, Bruce is stealing his shareholders' property. Sure, he might own a sizable chunk of the company, even a majority of that company, but there are still a ton of non-billionaire investors who are watching their retirement funds get recklessly driven around Gotham at night. A bigger issue with this kind of behavior is insider trading, which is is buying and selling company stocks when you know that there's something being mismanaged inside the company, but you're still pretending that everything is fine so you can make a profit. For instance, if you knew that company assets were being stolen and disappearing, but publicly you told people to buy stock like nothing was wrong, or, you know, you had charities you own buy and sell stock for their own benefit, that is big oof levels of illegal there, Bruce. Thankfully, it's something that recent comics have begun to address. After the Joker and Punchline steal all of Bruce's money, it exposes the fact that Batman has for years been embezzling funds from Wayne Enterprises every time he crashes a bat jet ski. In Batman number 101, we see Lucius Fox outright say, quote, I now have tens of billions of dollars sitting in cash in my bank account. I could give it back to you, but it wouldn't be like it was before. The government now has its eyes on you, Mr. Wayne. You are going to need to account for every penny. You would never be able to use any of it to fund Batman again, end quote. So this isn't just a case of me overthinking a narrative like I so often do. This is an outright reality of Batman's story that the world of DC is finally starting to acknowledge and address. And all of this is without actually accounting for what Bruce's daytime activities are doing to the valuation of his company. As you may or may not know, stock prices are a general reflection of the overall sentiment people have towards a company. Sure, while they should be based purely on statistical data around a company's earnings, production, history of giving shareholders dividends, and how much or little competition a company has around it, we all know that stock prices are affected by all kinds of finicky feelings from the general public, especially if the head of the company is a celebrity. For a company like, say, General Electric, I would bet that most of us don't know the name of their CEO, H. Lawrence Culp Jr. <laughs> Can't think of a more white guy CEO name, living in the Northeast and playing racquetball at the club on Saturdays. My point is, he's a rich and powerful dude, but he's not famous. Where he eats, what he posts on Facebook, because looking at that picture tells me he's definitely using Facebook, no one really cares what he's doing. The other end of that spectrum is our boy Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla, who can't get heartburn without making headlines. He's a celebrity, and he's done that largely of his own making, and it's clear that he uses it pretty regularly to influence people's opinions about Tesla, and by proxy, its stock price. A tweet about solar roofs? Stock up 3%. Tweet about how the stock price is too high? Down it goes 10%. Is what he's doing technically illegal? Uh, no? It's a gray area, to say the least. If you do something that knowingly affects the price of a stock, but you either buy or sell the stock right before or after it happens in order to make yourself money, that's illegal, because you're manipulating the stock price yourself. Elon is a person strongly involved in Tesla's business, aware that his actions both online and offline will move the stock price, affecting thousands of individual stock portfolios, retirement incomes, etc. And he chooses to make publicly controversial moves anyway. Anyway, I'm not going up against the world's richest man today. Today. Who knows what dumb content decisions I make down the line. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not doing it today. The point is, Batman is not a Lawrence Culp Jr. Batman is an Elon. The movies show consistently that Bruce makes head Headlines every time he gets himself a new girlfriend, does something irresponsible in one of his sports cars, or donates money to whatever the charitable organization of the moment is. Probably a charitable organization that he already owns and has gifted Wayne Enterprises stock to. His actions impact people's overall perception of the business that bears his name, Wayne Enterprises. And as
his actions are always for the worse. It tanks the stock price of the company. So let's say that you make headlines by burning down your mansion, and then you use those tanking stock prices to buy up your majority share. Now you're treading on some very tricky legal territory. And, oh wait, that's exactly what happens at the end of Batman Begins. But the important thing is that my company's future is secure. Speaking of insider trading, Bruce's use of charities in all of this is, again, pushing the boundaries of legality. Surprisingly, using charitable foundations as puppets for your control is totally legal, so long as Bruce is doing his taxes correctly. But using those charities to hold stock so he can regain control of his company? Yep, that's where things get dicey. Many high-wealth individuals will donate to charities in order to reduce the amount that they have to pay in taxes at the end of the year. That is a fairly normal and totally legal thing to do. However, using a charity to hold your stock for for you can be seen as insider gifting. It's kind of like insider trading, but with a little wrapping paper thrown in to spice things up. Consider this, you donate all of your stock to a charity when the price is high, knowing that things are about to crash. Your charitable donation actually winds up being worthless. It crashed, but it looks great on your taxes because you get to tell the government that you donated all your earnings this year when the stock value was high. As a result, there are criminal penalties for giving stock to a charity when you have willful knowledge of a wrongful act. Bruce, of course, knows that the face of Wayne Enterprises is also a secret vigilante who's stealing equipment from the company to more effectively punch crooks. This is Insider Gifting 101. See, when everyone makes jokes about Batman being the real criminal of his movies, they point to things like him attacking underprivileged goons, or breaking and entering into villains' hideouts, or racing around town in his Batmobile. And those are all certainly things that you shouldn't dismiss. In Batman Begins Alone, one article is calculated that Batman commits a total of 68 crimes. But what everyone is always overlooking is that his biggest crime are of the white-collar variety. Embezzlement, fraud, insider trading, stock manipulation. And the prison time for this stuff can add up quickly, ranging from a few years to a few centuries. Contrary to popular belief, billionaires can wind up in prison. Take the cases of Bernie Madoff and Alan Stanford, two men famous for massive Ponzi schemes that wound up stealing billions of dollars from their investors. Both became billionaires in the process. Both were sentenced to over 100 years in prison. On the other hand, you have situations like Enron, which in 2011 was the seventh largest company in the United States. Some corruption, embezzlement, and fraud later, the corporation goes bankrupt and shareholders lose $74 billion. For that, the CEO of Enron, Jeff Skilling, only received 24 years in federal prison and got out after 12. So, like I said, punishments for this sort of stuff can range a lot. But it's likely that if Bruce were ever caught for all the stuff that he does, he'd serve much more time for his business crimes as Bruce Wayne than he would for all his non murdery vigilante crimes as the Batman. In short, make some changes, Bruce. Wayne Enterprises is a publicly traded company and not just your personal piggy bank. Not anymore, sir. And until you decide to do that, I'm listing Wayne Enterprises stock as a very strong sell. Heck, you might even want to short it, but that's a story for another day. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut.